Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with the immortal John Hancock. How's it going, dude? Doing great. Glad to be here. Where are we? We're in my room of doom. And you are a big Sega fan. Just tell me how big a fan you are. I love Sega. <laughs> the thing with the tongue. That's great. That's right. I love Sega a lot. So why are we here today? We're here to talk about Sega CD hardware and software. That's right. So this is going to be a buying guide for people who are interested in Checking out the Sega CD. What do you need to know about the hardware mm -hmm. and some of the games you should definitely pick up day one? You ready day to do one. this? Let's do it. So we're going to get into the hardware. Yes. This is designed for people who are, you know, just want to jump in here. Yes. So, all right. So what model should we look at first? So the first one to come out in the United States was a Sega CD, also known as the Model 1. Okay. Was and this the attachment that sat next to it? Underneath. Underneath? Oh, yes. Okay. So the first one was underneath. It oh. had some minor issues. Um, you kind of had to use a controller to, like, open the door and stuff. And there was... There's oh, some really? other issues with it. It's kind of finicky. Um, this is not the model I recommend. For a collector, as a collector item, this is definitely harder to get okay. than, than the Model 2, which we'll talk about. And and as far as, as like, say, the the, uh, the cables and stuff, like, does this have its own power supply? It's yes. Own... Okay. That's the, the fun of uh, <laughs> any Sega CD add-ons. They have their own power supply. And so, okay. um, again, the, the Model 1 is much harder to come by than the Model 2. And not as reliable, hmm. and so not not the one I recommend. Okay. But but definitely collector, collectors wide, pick it up if you ever see one. I've never seen one in the box. So that's yeah. cool. <laughs> I got this box donated uh, by Video Game Wizards, which hmm. uh, they've donated a lot of things in my collection. And I've and you know the box is not in the best shape, but free is the best price. Oh, so, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. This is the one I was referring to. Yes. This, this is the one you see the most of, right? Yes, and this is the one I recommend because it's cheap to replace the lens. Now, oh, okay. the one thing that's important hmm. to know is that your lens in your game system will go out. Right. And Regardless of what, what console. I yeah. Mean, eventually it will. Yeah, your CD lens, which reads the discs, um, will need to be replaced. And on the Model 2, it's, it's easier to fix. Now, hmm. there's people out there that repair it. Um, I personally have a friend fix mine, um, but this CD uh, unit in particular will play burns for people that go that route. Now, why is this box so big? Um, it, 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 is it? It's oh. long. It's the, so that this sits on the side of the unit. So the actual unit is pretty long. It sits underneath your Genesis. Oh, so it has like this little shelf mm -hmm. thing. Okay. It also ha comes with an extra plastic piece so that aesthetically it looks okay with even the Model 1. So they mm. had to package that in with the unit. So whether you had a, a Sega Genesis Model 2 or 1, oh, um, it would look oh, it wouldn't look weird. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Now I have a question for you. I've always wondered this. Um, does this work with a 32x? Yes, I actually have one hooked up in the other room. Okay. And that's actually the, I call it the Frankenstein setup, and uh, that's what I roll with. Now, because there were some games that yes. that no, we're not going to show those, but would that use both or that could potentially do both? Yeah. So there was specific games that were bundled in which if you had a 32X attachment, you would have an enhanced color palette okay. playing with your Sega CD. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. This was a crazy time for, for Sega because, yeah. I mean, they just went accessory mm -hmm. crazy, didn't they? Yeah. You know? Kind of like PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this was, this was definitely a very... Uh, uh, interesting time for consoles because it was it's transitioning from one format to another yeah. you know both both with with 2d graphics to 3d mm -hmm. graphics like the mm -hmm. 3dx or yep. 32x sorry yeah. and the the format from the cartridge to the cd i Absolutely. mean and sega was just yeah. like right there it's like yep. no we got a solution yep sega was really trying to get ahead of the super nintendo which uh technically was superior mm. to it and they were trying to jump ahead and in some ways they were very revolutionary in other ways it was like man what were they thinking yeah so. there, there's definitely some some lessons to be learned with yes this. <laughs> yes next up so this next one is the one i have yes and i bought it because it was just the simplest solution <laughs> This is wonderful. Um, the CDX. I, the CDX. And actually, I recently found... Or the Mega... Mega... 
Mega CD. So what, uh, it's it's called, Sega CDX. But, but in, in Europe, it was called uh, the Mega, C, Mega, Dr Mega Drive. The Mega Drive was the Genesis counterpart right. overseas. Okay. So um, it was probably called something. Honestly, I don't know. Yeah. But what I do know is that the CDX, there's a couple things that's, that's important to know if you own one of these. Number one. Do not use a Genesis Model 2 power adapter with your Sega CDX. Um, it's not good for the system. Okay. Number two, I if need you, to rush home and try to <laughs> check. <laughs> number two, if you're playing backup copies, do not play them on your CDX because if your lens goes out in your CDX, it's very difficult to repair. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so pirated backup copies. Uh, can, can damage the, the, the lens. It's on not this. good for that. Okay. And uh, I recently found that out. And oh. so, from a good friend who repairs them and says, this is not fun to repair at all and it's very difficult. What I like about this and why I bought it is because it's small. It's mm -hmm. it, it looks like a. A Discman. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And, and it actually functions like that too. As, yeah. as you it, you originally told me about this. It's like, yeah, it comes oh, with batteries. Can... There's actually a battery holder in and it. And there's like a little LED screen on yeah. there where you can actually like, you know, advance your songs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But what I love about this, it's a small unit. You can play the CDs, you can play the, the regular cartridges. Mm -hmm. It does everything except for 32X, which is yes. not that big of a deal. Not not a deal breaker. And it's I have actually had this at several shows and it's, it's very uncommon, mm -hmm. very hard to find this. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't recommend that because it's hard to repair. Yes. Okay. I would go with the Model 2. It's cheaper, easier to fix. Go with that. Um, I think aesthetically it, it looks nice with a, it like a Model really cool. with the Model 2. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's just my call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's this one here, which is like this big VCR looking thing. <laughs> this does look huge. How, tell me about this. Pioneer Laser Active. Okay. Also known as a system for rich people. <laughs> so um, this was really expensive when it came out and it's still expensive. And what it was, was a laser disc player that, that purchased separately for hundreds of dollars, you could get modules to play Sega, Sega CD, or Turbo Graphics, mm -hmm. or Karaoke. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it also played specific laser disc games that you had to have the corresponding module to go with. This is crazy. Yes. So this never happens. Like, yes. like I mean, to give you an idea, this is like Sony saying to Pioneer, yeah. hey, if you're gonna come out with like a, a Blu-ray player, yes. by the way, here's like a little add-on thing that you can shove in there to play games. Yeah, like a PS4 add-on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like amazing this happened. So this, uh, there's some advantages of this, which is kind of cool is that um, this can play, um, Mega Drive and Genesis. Okay, so it's region free. Well, not with the, I do believe when it comes to the the, the CDs, you have to have the specific oh. region, but for the carts, you don't. God, it doesn't make wild. any sense. Huh. But um, I've had this in my collection a long time. Got it from a close friend at a show probably 10 years ago. This is, this every once in a while on the Seattle forum on Facebook, there's this, there's, uh, forum on there where people go around to thrift stores and pawn shops yeah. and every once in a while it's not yeah. often but they'll find one of these sitting in with all the other dvds and laser yeah. players are like oh my god like you know yeah. for 15 dollars i mean yeah because nobody knows what it is yeah i'm missing the turbo graphics add-on it's really expensive but i'm i'm happy to have this i do collect for the system mm -hmm. it's one of the few things i'm missing in my collection definitely that's cool yeah all right well that is the hardware Let's take a look at some games you recommend. All right, dude, so now we're on to the games and I was really excited because I come over here, I see your Room of Doom and this yeah. wall of Sega CD games. I had no idea how many there were. 147 games released in the US. Wow. And I was lucky enough to collect it early on. I actually owned a Sega CD in high school and played it with my friends. Hmm. And so, you know, collected it early on before the prices got crazy. Yeah, so you picked out of your collection about 11 games that 11 you, games. you recommend people go out day one. Yes, yes, day one games that I think that would appeal to a wide variety of people. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, well, first one. Final Fight. 
Okay. You know, I love Fighter. myself. Yes, <laughs> I love myself some brawlers. It's a brawler. Oh, it's a brawler, not, it's not a, a fighting game. Nope. Okay. No, it's a brawler. Um, though what's cool about this version is it, it includes all three playable characters. There was a Super Nintendo version of this game, and the first version released didn't have all three playable characters. Now, this I'm noticing is a cardboard box as opposed to the others, yes. which are uh, the, 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 the plastic. Yeah. So the early Sega CD games were released in these weird cardboard oh. boxes. Oh, they were. Okay. Downside, you never find them in great shape. I'm sure. They're always, you know, banged up. Um, very, you know, you rarely find them in great shape. I bet. And so, uh, if you can find one in great shape, it's it's great to pick up, even if you don't collect Sega CD, because you can trade it to someone that was interested in collecting it. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Very cool. Yeah. This next one here, Lords of Thunder. Okay. Lords of Thunder. <laughs> yeah. It's, it rock and roll. That's right. If you're um, any type of metal fan, it has a great soundtrack. It's a shooter. It's hard. Um, it's 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 an amazing game. Um, it also is on Turbo Graphics uh, CD, mm. which um, you know they're they're both uh, sought after. Mm -hmm. But the Sega CD one is excellent gameplay. Uh, I enjoy playing it. Uh, these are my types of uh, shooters that I like to play. Do you prefer? I noticed this one. It looks like it's a horizontal as opposed to vertical. Is it do you horizontal? Prefer that? I oh. prefer horizontal. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I prefer the vertical for yep. some reason. I don't know why that is. Yeah. But I'm I'm a fan of like Gradius or yeah. R Type. Right. And those are my type of shooters I like to play, and that's why I like Lords of Thunder. It's All right. Excellent. Cool. Excellent soundtrack. Oh, right here. <laughs> thump 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 thump. Yeah. So this is my number one pick for Sega CD, and this is not gonna be for everybody, but it is a super intense hexagonal grid RPG strategy game. Okay, okay. And so that right there- Requires okay, patience. Requires patience. Um, it has anime cutscenes. Okay. It is, uh, there's four different characters you can play with four different endings. It is super long. You can, in the options menu, um, cut down on the animations of battle, which would cut down gameplay. Mm. Uh, for fans of those types of games, it is a must play. I I, I then re uh, recollect, I do believe EGM did it, gave it a mediocre rating. And it's like many strategy games, right? If you're not into them, it's like meh. But if you're really into this stuff, it's an amazing game. It's my pick for the system. Really? Yes. Wow, Dark all right. Blizzard is a high praise. Up. High praise. Next up. This game shows up in a lot of yeah. best ofs. Yeah, so this is Shining Force CD, which is pretty much should be called Shining Force on crack. Um, <laughs> it is just a polished Shining Force. If you're a fan of Shining Force, this is the one to get. Okay. And it's amazing. It's, you know, a Sega staple. Um, this, on top of being an amazing strategy game, has a very very clean menu system, which was used in many other games in the Shining series, including uh, in Shining the Darkness and some other mm -hmm. things. It's it's amazing. So check it out. Uh, it's definitely um, for for strategy games a must a must own. Okay. It's it's definitely uh, a little bit less nerdy than Dark Wizard. Now I'm noticing in the back here it says CD backup the RAM card recommended. So. Yeah. So the CD backup gave uh, game saves a lot more options, a lot more. A saves could be used with a CD backup. Yeah. It, is, it is getting harder to find. I know you can, I do believe you can mod your system now. It's a little bit easier to do now. Okay. But back then, you know, uh, game save was very important for RPGs, which took up a lot of space. And that, that's a big challenge when mm -hmm. the whole industry was moving from cartridge to CD. You just can't write to a CD. So how yeah. are you going to save your game, right? Yeah. So you either have a password system or something like that. Yep. Hmm. Cool. All right. This next one is has the strangest introduction I've ever seen of any video game ever made. <laughs> okay, and so, you own a lot of them. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's just, uh, and then it, this should just tell you a little bit about the game. It's on the back of the game case. It says, "Strap on your bunny ears and save the world." <laughs> and so this is the craziest. Like, and think of like an anime shooter, and it's Kyo Flying Squadron. Um, this game is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but it is fantastic, colorful, amazing. I know um, a lot of people are looking for yeah, this game. Yeah, this is the one game that's missing from, it is probably the hardest to get for the Sega CD collection. And I, I think it's exclusive, correct? Yes. Okay, well that's why. Yeah, and it's great. And cool. it's funny, again, the strangest intro, you can probably you know go on YouTube and find the intro. It's, it's worth checking out, it's bizarre. So this next game here, 
you talk about this this game a lot. That's because you were one of the few people to actually own a sealed copy of it, correct? That's right. Uh, I got this game at a pawn store for a couple bucks. And <laughs> the funniest thing about it, they've had this in their collection uh, at their store for years, like a couple of years. It would just sat there wow. next to some sports titles because the Sega CD didn't sell well. A lot of people were like, it doesn't really add a lot of things to the to my to my gaming and well, it, a lot of people i think were like what do i care about video mm -hmm. you know i mean a big deal right yeah snatcher um i know chris Tremu, a friend of mine of lost classics he is a huge uh snatcher fan it is it's like nothing else right it is an amazing game um it's a it, cyberpunk adventure game essentially yes. right yeah you know, and uh, made by the guy who made Metal Gear Solid. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, amazing, amazing game. Everything about it, it's 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 a unique gameplay style. It's a must own, and it's really expensive. But uh, finding a sealed copy is just impossible now. So I have a question for you. Yeah. This is a trick question. Okay. You own a sealed copy. Yeah. How have you played it? Ha ha! Ha ha! Had a burn of it. <laughs> had a burn of it, and I had a burn of it ex specifically made for, uh, made so that I could play the game. Good answer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, you know, my seal is not perfect, but um, this has been in my collection a long time. Oh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a, a pride, yeah. you know, part of your, your collection. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So maybe you don't have a lot of money, and maybe you still want to collect Sega CD, this is for you, Sonic CD. Sonic CD, for me, is one of the best Sonics ever made. A lot of people have said that. Yeah, it's it's amazing, um, it's exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing is there's like a time option in the game where you go through time and play different parts of the level and it goes past, present, future. And it, it's amazing. It's, it's, I would say, definitely top five for the system. And a little piece of history here. This is a this is actually released on iOS and probably mm -hmm. Android recently. Yep. And it's a, actually a, that's where I played this. Yeah. It's actually a really good port. Yeah, it's really good, and it's a it's a must own. Mm -hmm. um, really, it, it it it's one of my favorite Sonic games of all time. Cool, fantastic. Uh, this is a, a very 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 close to my heart. I'm from Redding, California and which Work and Design's headquarters was in Reading. Mm. And a good friend of mine, Jackie Powers, who is the voice of Null of this Lunar RPG, signed my copy for me, which wow. I, I just recently went to California and stayed with her family. So yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's good stuff. So Lunar, just an amazing RPG. Um, you know, again, Work and Design's did some wonderful RPGs for the system. This is my favorite. Some people, may have chosen another rpg for the system but the thing is that, that i mean lunar comes up all the time mm -hmm. as a great yeah. series and th yeah. now lunar has been ported to a bunch of different systems but was this the first or this was the first okay. and then it was ported to playstation oh and then okay. so they enhanced some of the uh, graphics and features um this is the original oh and, okay but it, you know technically it's a translation from japanese sure lunar. but yeah i mean but definitely uh good stuff hmm cool yeah, variety here. Yes. Speaking of variety, yeah, he knows I like racing games. Oh yeah. <laughs> so huge fan, huge huge fan of Road, of Road, Road Rush. Rush. So uh, I own this game. I have a, a Sega CD as well. And the first thing I noticed when I put this in there, I popped it in and Soundguard started playing. I was like, oh my! And it's like Rusty Cage, yeah. which is my favorite. I mean, that album is so yes. amazing. So I was like, woohoo! I'm I'm a huge fan um, of Soundgarden. Yeah, and uh, you know it was one of the first CDs I actually wore out because I played it so much. Yeah, and uh, this Road Rash, you know, was one of the you know first games was with a with a band playing a soundtrack. And also, what I like about this version is that yes, it's got cheesy full motion video, but it's the best. Like yeah. it, like it's it has the weird colors and the bad acting, and everyone's got you know '90s tood. I mean, it's hilarious. Well, Road Rash is still fun to play because yeah. it didn't take itself seriously and. I was I was a huge fan of this back in the day um, when I first played my Sega CD at a rental store. They had a place where you could pay some money per hour and mm. play it there. This was the first game I played on Sega CD, <laughs> yeah. so it was great. Yeah. And I kept my 99 cent price sticker on it. <laughs> so, good stuff. All right, next up, 
This is for all the fans who like to game like flashback. Right. And so this is actually a compilation. This is out of the out of this world parts one and two. Which is really weird because when you showed me that, you know, the heart of the alien and with that cover, I just I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. I mean I if it didn't have that, or if you didn't tell me underneath, yeah. I would never have guessed that this was out of this world. And I'm going to be honest, that's a terrible cover. It is pretty that's bad. That's pretty bad. Like, well, they get some like eighth grader to yeah. draw this or something, or like, this is bad. Um, and it kind of goes with, uh, I keep all my rental store stickers on. The history, yeah. And so, um, but yeah, this is actually pretty hard to find. Huh. And uh, it's a great compilation. And again, if, if you're a fan of those type of games, like, like Flashback, this is a must own. I don't think I've ever played the second one. And I, I don't think I've ever seen a compilation before. So that's yeah, pretty unusual. Yeah, and this is a game you need a lot of patience yeah, playing this yeah. because you're going to die a lot. <laughs> right. And it's very much like you have to pattern recognition. Oh, I got to do this. And you're going to die and then you do it again. So it's. But it's know. very groundbreaking for the time. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, yeah. the stuff that they did on these old systems with, yeah. with that game was astounding. So it's, it's a cool compilation. Yes, definitely. De definitely must have all right so this is an amazing upgrade so sega cd was known for adding sound adding cutscenes. this is the definitive version when you when you of think the of terminator of the terminator you think of movie tie-ins hmm. you think of something that that's not that great right kind of rushed or you know half-assed introduction gameplay sound amazing really hard challenging um it very much is a great compilation to the movie series huh. if you're a fan of the terminator this is a must play it's great and it's saying, up. saying digitized footage from the blockbuster movie real cd audio which a lot of that's yeah. what you know a lot of games added that huh. yeah. and q sound remember q oh yeah like surround sound yeah <laughs> yeah it's like feel around oh. yeah <laughs> the reach around yeah. there you go yeah, the kentucky fried movie <laughs> oh, yeah that's right <laughs> Awesome. That's an obscure reference. All right, these are good yeah. games. Yeah. When we were talking about originally doing a buying guide for the Sega CD, I was really excited because it seems like collectors are kind of coming around and really embracing the system like, like they never did before. Well, I think part of it too is you have more collectors now that are growing up with like the PlayStation and disc-based consoles. Right. And so now they're wanting to find, well, what are the original systems that were disc-based or add-ons that were disc-based? And Sega CD was one of the first consoles. It it came out after, the, I do believe, the TurboGrafx-16 CD, but it's still one of the first CD add-ons yeah. in the United States. Yeah, and also too, don't you feel that a lot of people nowadays are a little bit nostalgic for those old FMV you know, games? Like, yeah. there was a while there where people, they were at the butt of a joke, mm -hmm. but now yeah. a lot of people are like, you know they want to play those again yeah the the, the ugly 90s is cool again <laughs> yeah i think the other thing too is it's a little bit easier to set up a console versus like a like a vintage computer oh absolutely and this mm -hmm. is all encompassing so if you buy one of these units it you put pop in a cd and it mm -hmm. works and that that's kind of nice also too um, going through this process, I've learned that there are a lot of really good games for the system. Yeah. I mean, way more than we showed here. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the system is underrated, mm -hmm. and I think it, it got overshadowed by other successful systems that came out at the time. You know, the the 90s were crazy. There was a lot of great innovations, and, and technology was booming, and it, it kind of got to the side of, of other successful consoles when really if you dissect the library it actually has some solid titles. Definitely. All right well we would love to know down in the comments below uh, what other games you would recommend people who are jumping into the Sega mm -hmm. CD what games you would recommend they pick up day one. Uh, dude where can people find you on the internet? You can type in the immortal John Hancock is the easiest way. Um, I have a YouTube channel. I have a Twitter. I have a patron. Facebook. Uh, Facebook. That's right. <laughs> Same thing, immortal John Hancock. Awesome, dude. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on and doing this, man. Oh, I appreciate it. I love being on your channel. All right, guys. Thanks very much for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. John Hancock's amazing game room and collection is legendary at this point. And I'm always thrilled when he allows me to come down and hang out in his room of doom. Now, if you are unfamiliar with John Hancock and his 25 complete U.S. collections, <laughs> yes, it's true. Well, he and I have done a bunch of videos on my channel, including a rare look at the Neo Geo, both the arcade and the home systems, as well as the N-Gage. Who else talks about the N-Gage? 